Well, we're joined now by His Excellency, Governor of Katsina State, Ibrahim Shema. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Your Excellency, can I comfortably say that Katsina State is an investment destination? Oh, yes. Uh, without doubt. Katsina State has grown in leaps and bounds in the past couple of years that I have been there as Governor. We're very focused on the need for us to open our doors wide for investment opportunities and to create the enabling environment that government can put its hand to do so that we can attract interest as a you know, popular business destination for business communities. Besides, there is no serious economy in the world that can hope to grow and prosper at the pace in which we have to grow and prosper without giving opportunity to the private sector. That is why Katsina offers tremendous opportunities in the field of agriculture, soil minerals development, livestock development, and uh, other critical areas of infrastructure, education, and health. Tell us the kind of uh, strides you've taken in the agricultural sector. We do know it's about 75% of the population engaged in agriculture, if that's correct. What is going on in that sector? Absolutely. Agriculture comprises about 75% of the you know, uh, working approach of business life of our people in Katsina State. And, uh, you know, to develop agriculture, you can't just wait and depend on rain-fed agriculture. It was important for us from the beginning to establish some kind of synergy and connection between the rain-dependent agriculture and irrigation. Uh, you know, Katsina is summer all year round, and therefore you can grow crops from first day of January to the last day of December. When it's chilling winter in Europe, you can come to Katsina, plant and grow practically anything under the sun. And for us to move in that direction, we made sure we utilize our water bodies. We have about five major water bodies in Katsina, the Sabke Dam, the Zobe Dam, the Jivia Dam, the Ruansangi Dam, and other dams. And for us to encourage our people to go into all year round production, we had to pay serious attention to develop the agricultural skills during the uh, dry season, that is um, dry season farming. And we invested hugely in that area by ensuring that we move from just about a thousand hectares uh, cultivation per annum for dry season farming to more than a thirteen thousand hectares now in the last couple of years. And then on top of that, for the rain dependent agriculture, we made sure we invested hugely in terms of training, extension services, provision of chemicals and seeds and fertilizer. And uh, of course, we established the Songhai Katana Initiative which is a partnership with Songhai Farm in Porto Novo in Benin Republic. And this initiative is aimed at creating young farmers, uh, people who are young entrepreneurs in agricultural skills, and who we do know over time will be able to take up the challenges of modern agricultural skills and techniques. And they move from not just production of agricultural produce, but to you know, utilization of those produces, so those produce to provide uh, you know, employment for the Timmy youth in Kassan State, and to indeed and bundle the, the, the chain of activities in agriculture subsector and livestock development. I attach to that closely to uh, the issue of how we can drive home production in agro ally sector. Because you don't just produce something and leave it at that or uh, don't have access to market to the farmer. So you need to create access to market for the farmers. So in Katsina, what we have done is to ensure that we create market opportunities and market potentials for our farmers whenever they grow. One of the attitudes that the government has adopted or the approach that the government has adopted is that at the end of each farming season, we buy off produce from the farmers directly. We buy them at competitive prices. So that the farmer would not lose on the investment he has made on the farming activities for that particular year. For example, I asked the local governments to buy grains from the farmers at the end of each farming season, and state government equally buy grains from the farmers. And then we now sell these grains to our consumers at subsidized prices. Now, in that pattern, you can see that the farmer does not lose, and the consumer equally gains at, at control uh, regulated prices. So basically, uh, what we do is to ensure that we continue to establish uh, development and dynamism in agricultural production in Katsina. Uh, on top of that, Katsina is the largest producer of cotton in Nigeria. It is called the Cotton Production Center of Nigeria. And therefore, uh, the quality cotton we produce in Katsina equally provides tremendous amount of employment opportunities, especially for uh, the textile industry, for exportation of cotton and uh, cotton-related materials. And, and 
side by side with that is the way we move in the direction of livestock development. We make sure that we provide adequate uh, you know, uh, medication for our livestock. We treat the livestock regularly and uh, we support the livestock uh, cattle rearers with, uh, with a subsidized food. For example, just recently, we launched the sale of uh, you know, subsidized food for, for uh, livestock in Kassana State for all those who uh, rear cattle in Kassana. So in a nutshell, agriculture remains one of the key fundamental areas for job creation in Nigeria, not only in Kassana State. And we figure that if we pay attention and, and continue to stick to the production and development of agriculture with modern skills, well-trained group of young farmers, uh, developing some kind of young farmers that are adapting to modern techniques of farming, sadly, uh, Kassana is on the way to growth and development in this sector. You know, talking about uh, the dams, uh, you may mention the five dams, uh, Zobe, Jibia, Rua, Senya, and two other dams, and uh, what comes to mind is uh, what uh, you've been able to uh, utilize such dams, uh, uh, utilization of such dams, and again, seeing how you can have better yields for such crops or livestock. Uh, now, some will talk about uh, fertilizers, some will talk about some uh, good breeds uh, in terms of livestock. How have you been able to bring these experts with their expertise to help some of these farmers, especially those who are not uh, learned in that uh, kind of technology yeah. or advancement? Exactly. That is why we do the extension services for our farmers. So that our farmers are trained how to have better yield on a small piece of land. For example, the production capacity of per hectare, uh, you know, of uh, a, a, you know, a farmer in Katsina before we came into office, have dramatically changed because modern techniques will teach you how not just to get quality seeds, but how to plant deeper in the soil that will give you better yield. This came from the experts, and before now, people would just plant maybe per hectare, get X quantity of grains produced, which has now multiplied virtually because of the quality of services they get from the farm service centers and from other experts that report in Kassana. The Songhai Initiative is taking a center stage in improving the quality of production of the farmer and the improvement on the yield that he has per hectare. As for the livestock development, of course we imported some variety of livestock and are trying the process of artificial insemination to improve the quantity and the quality of meat and milk and dairy products that we get from the cattle. And these, uh, the farmers are being trained on a regular basis and uh, it's producing an yes, animal. Let's talk products. more about dairy products. Uh, that's one area that uh, a lot of Nigerians will be interested in. You've seen uh, some milk and yogurt and some have actually taken them steps ahead. You know, we've seen production of that in large quantity from your state. But are you doing anything about preservation? Yes, preservation is critical in dairy and dairy products. Because without preservation process, the entire agricultural process will be in trouble. Uh, you have to teach farmers how to preserve their produce and you have to teach the livestock growers and developers how to process and preserve milk. That is what the Sangai Initiative, which I keep hammering on, is bringing to bear on the change in dynamics of agriculture and livestock development in Kassan State. Because our farmers are now being trained how to not only get the milk out of the cow, but how to process it to produce other uh, components. And we are trying to get into partnership with a foreign farm to re-energize what we used to have in Ronka. There is a place called uh, Ronka Grazing Field where we have a dairy facility there, uh, you know, for a pretty long time in Katina that has gone comatose. We well, invited certain companies from uh, different parts of the world to make a submission and see how we can now turn that around and make it an effective facility for use by our, you know, uh, cattle rearers and uh, dairy processing facilities. Because the market for dairy products in Nigeria is extensive. Uh, it's quite astronomical. And if you measure the quantity of milk and other dairy products being imported into Nigeria, you can see the market is enormous and the potentials are huge. All our farmers need to do, or our cattle rearers need to do, is to be assisted, you know, and to be redirected and to be guided on how best to manage their cattle and then how to engage with other entrepreneurs 
who have the skill and the capacity to grow this particular sector of the economy in our state and our nation. One thing